Okay, so it's the 20th of June, and uh, looking at the volt voltmeter, the DMM across the little cap, 47 microfarad cap, it's sitting at zero millivolts. That's the scale. Uh, I'm doing a Faraday type experiment, but instead of a uh, conducting disk, I've got a bifolder pancake coil here, and um, it's a coaxial coil. I'm going to spin the magnet over top of this and see if the voltage changes. Notice it's just sitting at zero. I've got a capacitor and a Schottky diode <coughs> in series connected to the output of the coil. <laughs> output. Okay, now this is not supposed to, spinning a magnet is not supposed to generate any current in a Faraday disk. But I, I found if I s set it off the side a little bit, works better. See the voltage uh, starting to come up. 0.2 volts. Oops, 0.3. See how that works. Point uh, for my daughter is holding the disc down. <laughs> 0.5. Typically, this will get up to about uh, one. 1.5 millivolts as I do this and again uh, just very simply spinning this uh, magnetic disc uh, ring magnet we, this time we got up to 0.7 millivolts and just in that short time and of course it'll relax back a little bit but uh, I've done this several times now, one thing I have to say, this particular magnet is a little different <laughs> from some. If you look at it, it's it's got a north pole, changes south, north, south as you go around. So it's not just a, an ordinary ring magnet. I picked this out, picked this up from American, uh, what is it called, surplus and uh, science and surplus. So it's kind of a fun thing. And again, we can just charge this uh, capacitor right up by simply spinning the magnet above the BPC rather than using a conducting disc. And uh, I figured out this idea. I wanted to try it, and it did work. So there you go. I'm not sure if this adds to or further complicates para Faraday's paradox, but <laughs> there you have it. Happy experimenting.